Hi, this is Yaroslav from ShareMosh.com and today we're going to talk about the second, in my opinion, most exciting SharePoint 2013 preview features and that's um, metadata-driven navigation. So if you're familiar with the publishing sites in particular, uh, before, and this is an instance of a publishing site you're looking at uh, uh, in 2013 version, uh, the navigation is really driven by your site hierarchy. And um, if you go to site settings, uh, navigation, or in this case, uh, config configure navigation link right from here, um, you know, this is sort of a familiar sort of uh, um, the, the control set that allows us to really manage what pages are going to show up, which pages aren't going to show up, and, and et cetera, et cetera. So so in 2013 preview, uh, there is additional option here available um, called Manage Navigation. So Manage Navigation really allows you to, um, for both for current and for global navigation, so for the side navigation, for top navigation, uh, allows you to use managed metadata service application and, and terms from that service application to actually draw the navigation. So let's, uh, let's see what happens if I switch to Manage Navigation on both of those options here. I click OK here. So obviously, first thing um, you'll notice right away, the navigation here changed to item one, item two, and some new page. What happens behind the scenes, if we go to central administration, uh, manage service applications, I already have the managed metadata service application installed here. Um, and I have the default group created here called navigation and a term set called main nav. So in here I have four options, item one, item two, item three, and a new page, which is exactly the options that you see um, on, on a page here, uh, right here. So what happens is that uh, when the user clicks on one of those items, they're, they're being taken to the, the user-friendly URL rather than the page URL. So there isn't any slash pages slash default ASPX or anything like that. It's much more like uh, you see in a, uh, other traditional web content management systems such as even WordPress. So um, those those can be defined right inside the uh, term store, right inside your term store, or they can be automatically created as new, uh, new content is added to the page. So let me demonstrate. Uh, let's say I have, uh, you know, new pages already here, but I'm going to create one more page here uh, and call it page number two. So as you can see in the preview right away, we have uh, the URL that we're getting is uh, publishing slash page number two. So publishing is my uh, publishing site collection in this case, and uh, the page two is the actual page. Uh, name. So once I click create, uh, my page is getting created and also right away, um, obviously I can add the content in here, right away that particular tag is added to the, uh, um, the manage, uh, to the term store and display right in here, right in the top. So um, and if I refresh this particular term store, you'll see that that term has been added. Um, you have a choice uh, where, um, what term uh, store is going to be used uh, to draw the navigation from. In my case, if I go to the uh, uh, site settings and my navigation settings, uh, you'll see that I picked here my particular term store. So you can really pick anything and you can manage rules around it, whether users can add to it or not. One of the other things that I wanted to uh, point out is when I go to the, the actual uh, particular page that let's say go to the one that I created here. Uh, so there are some general options here. Um, related to the actual label and etc. And there's a navigation tab. A navigation tab here, uh, you can you can actually customize how how the menus are going to be appearing inside the navigation. How they're going to actually you know the title of the navigation, as well as um, uh, whatever hover text is going to uh, they're going to get. Um, and uh, if I go to t uh, term driven pages, there's even more options where I can pick what my page is going to be and wh where that page is going to point to. So in here, this is actually where you can see what's the actual name of the page, where is it located. In this case, um, it's, a, it's a site collection relative uh, page and there's a pages library and there's a page dash dash two is actual page that gets that's responsible. So really, um, the good thing about it is, for instance, if you if you need to create if you need to change the um, the structure of your navigation, 
as you, as your portal evolves, you don't need to worry about the fact that you need to restructure the actual content placeholder and placeholders underneath it. So it doesn't mean, for instance, if I want to have, uh, you know, the top nav is my site as my site names or web names, and underneath I have pages. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, I can still have my navigation structure as is, um, and uh, or change, and then point it to the source where I where I really care about. So really, I don't have to uh, I don't have to create custom navigation. I don't have to uh, change my content just to change how things are appearing in the navigation. So that's that's pretty handy. And also, there's a couple of uh, interesting things here that you'll notice, such as SEO optimization or SEO properties, uh, such as meta description, keywords, etc. I'll, uh, I'll let you go through those and, and read it for yourself, but those are uh, re really handy for a public site. And additional item that I wanted to show you is this custom properties. So as you remember, before in 2010, this managed metadata term store was available here, but there wasn't any, like you couldn't add your own properties. You couldn't, let's say, add the, another property to the ones that are already here. Uh, and uh, the way that you can use those properties, you can use them either um, in your custom code, of course, but you don't really need to create anything custom to actually take advantage of those properties. So there is a term store web part in SharePoint, built in in SharePoint, that you can that can be used to actually display one of those properties. So for instance, if I go to edit this page and, and insert the web part here, uh, try to insert the web part, one of the web parts under content rollup you'll see term property. So term property will actually be able to, uh, by default is gonna display the title, but one of the configuration items that I have here is I can pick either description, path, etc. from the current contacts. So, and this is really useful because uh, SharePoint or this particular web part is aware which page you're on and it'll, dis it'll extract the um, corresponding uh, metadata properties for that particular term store item representing this page and in here there's the last option here you can see custom property that's where I can actually um, if I had a custom properties in my term store uh, in here on a page two let's create one here if I had the uh, custom properties I could actually render them right from there so in here I have a custom property called test and the value is test one two three so if I go back to my page and if I say give me the property called test, it should ideally give me the uh, test one, two, three as a value. In this case, it doesn't. I'll blame it on some sort of a delay or synchronization issue. Um, keep in mind, we're in a preview, so this also could be a bug. So, um, and, but the default one is name, and name renders just fine for me. So I assume that by the time preview hits the RTM, we're going to be able to pull custom properties. So that's one of the one of the things that didn't quite work. Really great feature, mainly both for collaboration and public sites. Mainly for publishing sites, is going to dramatically simplify the way that you have to um, that you architect your information uh, on your site. Uh, mainly because you don't have to really worry about the uh, top navigation in terms of that it has to mimic the content and how, how the menu is going to adapt to your content to render what you want. That's one thing and for public sites specifically the URLs are going to be way more friendly so you're not going to have this pages slash default ASPX or whatever. It's going to be just um, uh, user friendly uh, pages that are optimized for, for search engines. Stick around for, for more videos on SharePoint 2013 uh, at uh, sharemuch.com or my YouTube channel.